Cooper, an Air Force pilot, is flying over the skies when his jet abruptly loses power. Cooper awakens from his dream, and his daughter Murph speaks with him about ghosts. Murph inquires as to if her father had another dream concerning the plane catastrophe, but Cooper refuses to discuss the matter. Donald, Cooper's father-in-law, summons the children to the table for breakfast. Cooper's son Tom teases his sister for claiming that a ghost smashed their father's miniature lander. Cooper informs Murph that ghosts do not exist, but pushes her to present a credible case to support her hypothesis. The grown-ups go outside to discuss the rapidly spreading disease known as blight, which is hurting the fields. Cooper and his children leave the house, and on their way to school, they blow a tire. Cooper instructs Tom to fix the tires while he and Murph converse. A military drone flies overhead, and Cooper rushes the youngsters inside. Despite having a flat tire, they follow the drone as it passes across the cornfields. Tom takes control of the truck as his father searches for his equipment. Cooper is focused with capturing the drone, not noticing they are on the verge of a cliff. Cooper successfully hacks the drone and lands it with Murph's help. Cooper plans to give the drone a new function now that it no longer serves the military. They arrive at school. Tom exits for class, but Murph remains in the car. Cooper attends a parent-teacher conference, where the principal praises Tom's potential to become a great farmer someday. Cooper, on the other hand, wants Tom to attend college and believes that taxpayer money should be used to subsidize the institution now that there are no armies. However, the country does not require any more college-educated individuals, rather it requires farmers to assist with the global hunger. Murph's teacher expresses concern about her curiosity in the moon landing. The moon landing is now regarded a hoax, and Murph should avoid focusing on such issues. When the teacher dismisses society's so-called breakthroughs, Cooper responds that if such useless advances, such as the MRI, were still being made, his wife would still be alive. The teacher apologizes and asks Cooper for his assistance with Murph's behavior. Cooper claims he will address it by taking her to a baseball game. Cooper returns to the car and informs Murph that she is suspended. They return to the farm, where the tractors have gone haywire. Books litter the floor in Murph's room. Murph claims it's the spirit speaking via Morse code, but Cooper disagrees. Later that day, Cooper repairs the tractors, but the cause of the issue remains unknown. He and Donald reminisce about the days when every day brought new innovations. Donald appreciates the world's current calm status, but he is concerned by Cooper's unwavering desire to fly to space. At the baseball game, Tom promises to take care of the farm in the future. Suddenly, sirens begin to sound, alerting the public of a sandstorm. Everyone appears unconcerned, and they leave in order. When Murph learns she has left the window open, the family travels back home. She and Cooper rush up to close it. As the dust settles, Cooper notices an unusual pattern on the floor. The following day, Murph discovers her father in her room. Cooper throws a coin, which immediately falls to the floor. He smiles, explaining that the ghost in Murph's chamber is gravity all along. Recognizing that the sand is speaking in binary, the father-daughter team takes out a map to mark the coordinates provided by the sand. Cooper prepares to leave for the destination, refusing to let Murph accompany him. Murph, however, stows away by hiding under the sheets, prompting Cooper to allow her to join. When night falls, Cooper drives cautiously across the unfamiliar territory. He exits the car and cuts down the gate that is preventing them from passing. A flashlight comes on, and a voice threatens Cooper before tasting him. Cooper wakes up inside the restricted area and is interrogated by Tars, a tactical robot. Dr. Amelia Brand enters the room and introduces herself to Cooper, who is familiar with another Professor Brand. Amelia brings Cooper to a conference room where his daughter mingles with the senior attendees. There, he reconnects with Professor Brand. Cooper recounts how they discovered the underground base vaguely until Murph reveals that gravity guided them there. Cooper refuses to disclose anything further until their safety is secured. They laugh at him when they disclose they are NASA. Behind the walls, a team of engineers is working on a rocket ship. Professor Brand describes how the hunger has led to a decline in public support for space exploration. However, they have shifted their focus to finding a solution to the food shortfall. Every year, the blight disease affects a variety of crops. Wheat and potatoes are no longer farmed, and corn is expected to follow shortly. The blight depletes Earth's oxygen supply, thus Professor Brand predicts that Murph's generation will be the last to live. NASA has no plans to save the world, but they intend to leave it. Professor Brand introduces Cooper to Project Endurance, the final element to the Lazarus missions. 
the Lazarus missions are Earth's final voyage in search of a habitable planet. After great persuasion, Cooper volunteers to be Project Endurance's pilot for humanity, particularly for his children. Cooper received his mission briefing in the conference room. NASA discovered a wormhole around Saturn that connects to another galaxy. They also believed that some benevolent creatures created the wormhole to assist humans. NASA dispatched 12 astronauts to all 12 planets 10 years ago. Only three have communicated about their planet's suitability for life. The mission has both Plan A and Plan B. Plan A is to use the entire facility, which they are now in, as a spacecraft that will use gravitational forces to launch itself and the remaining individuals into space. However, the process exists only in theory. Professor Brand has yet to put it into practice. Plan B, on the other hand, involves sending thousands of fertilized eggs to establish a colony on the new planet. With a determined expression, Professor Brand promises Cooper that Plan A will be functioning by the time he returns. His words pierce Cooper's soul, and Cooper now has entire faith in him. Back at home, Cooper tries to talk to Murph, who is devastated by her father's departure. Donald approaches Cooper later that night about his dream of space travel becoming a reality. Cooper claims that the mission is humanity's last hope. It's time for them to leave the planet that is slowly killing them. Cooper soothes Murph as morning arrives. Cooper explains that he's simply doing this for her and Tom. Murph tries to sway his mind, claiming that the ghost's message is the word stay. Cooper does not listen and holds her fiercely as if it were the final time. He hands her a watch, explaining that time and space move slower than on Earth and that they may be the same age when he returns. However, she throws it aside out of rage. Cooper bids her farewell and promises to return. Outside, Cooper hugs his son and hands over the truck and his responsibilities to him. In the car, he checks under the blanket to ensure Murph isn't present. Murph chases him after he drives away, but she is too late. As the countdown begins, drops of tears fall down his cheeks as if it is counting for him. The rocket takes off and Cooper's team, together with Tiaras, leave their home. In space, Amelia and Cooper indulge in lively banter. They approach the Endurance space station, and Doyle prepares to lock the hatch, successfully docking the spacecraft. The crew enters the station, turns on the controls, and activates TASD, another tactical robot. The boosters turn on, and the space station begins to rotate. Romilly, another member of the crew, is feeling bad. Amelia brings him some medicine. Professor Brand arrives on TV and bids them good luck on their two-year trek to Saturn. Endurance begins spinning its way toward the deep dark space. Cooper looks out the window at Earth, which is now many kilometers away. Meanwhile, Romilly enters his chamber and prepares for deep slumber. Amelia and Cooper chat about the three astronauts they may meet, Dr. Mann, Dr. Miller, and Dr. Edmonds. Dr. Mann earns high appreciation from her because he inspired the others to join him on the perilous journey. Amelia enters her chamber, and Cooper takes this opportunity to speak with Taurus quietly. He asks the robot if Amelia has a relationship with Dr. Edmonds. Tars dodges the subject, claiming it is trained not to reveal important information. Cooper sits in front of the video recorder, saying goodbye to his children before falling asleep. Back on Earth, Professor Brand pays a visit to Cooper's family. He hands him the video message from Cooper, but Murph is uninterested. Brand chats with Donald about adopting Murph under his wing. Years pass, and a dim glow appears near Saturn's fringes. Cooper is awake and watching the video messages from his family. He sits next to Romilly, who appears anxious about their circumstances. Cooper soothes him and lends him his earbuds. Doyle and Cooper examine the photos captured by probes that traveled through the wormhole. On the radio, Amelia notifies the team that they will be at the wormhole in a few hours. The team waits uneasily in their spacesuits, the fate of humanity riding on their shoulders. The ship's integrity barely holds up with the incredible speeds they're traveling it via the vortex. On her side, Amelia notices a distortion in space that appears to be an arm reaching out. She reaches out, mistaking them for omnibenevolent entities. Then everything falls silent, the spacecraft stabilizes, and they float smoothly again. The crew assembles for a meeting. They chose which planet to visit. Dr. Edmonds has lost contact with the crew, leaving them with two alternatives. One option is a planet near Gargantua, a black hole, one hour there equals seven years on Earth. With this information, Doyle and Cooper contend. Doyle wants to go on with Plan B and let everyone on Earth die. Cooper suggests a middle ground. The ship will sail to the opposite side of Gargantua so that their landing time is unaffected. The crew agrees to the plan. After some preparations, Case joins the group on their mission to the planet, while Romilly remains behind. They encounter severe turbulence as they approach the planet's surface. The team prepares to land, and as they pass through the clouds, they are met by a large ocean.
Cooper deftly steers the vessel, coming to a tight halt just before reaching the water. Doyle and Amelia walk into the shallow seas as time ticks away. Case discovers debris from Dr. Miller's beacon. They move towards the mountains in search of the remaining wreckage. Inside the ship, Cooper sees the mountains are waves. Fortunately, the waves are heading away from them. Unfortunately, another is following it from behind. Despite the towering wall of water, Amelia continues to hunt for Dr. Miller's Dea. She discovers it but falls while attempting to get it out. Case morphs into a wheel and races for her. It transports her to the ship, where Cooper locks the hatch. Just as Doyle is about to enter, the violent waves take him away. The wave makes contact with the ship, flooding its interior. They are thrown around inside as they surf the wave. They survive the harsh seas, but the ship suffers damage. Cooper snaps at Amelia for failing to return when he instructed her to. They have been on the planet for nearly an hour. They lost not only Doyle, but decades of time. Amelia believes that due to the time difference, Dr. Miller only arrived on the planet a few hours ago, which is why the debris was relatively undamaged. Cooper's pessimism grows when he discovers his daughter is now an adult. The waves do not allow them time to recover since another is ready to crash against them. Their desperate attempts to restart the engine succeed, and they fly away to safety. Back on board the ship, a much-aged Romley greets them. They've been gone for more than 23 years, leaving the two in shock. Romley assures them that he has learned everything he can about black holes but is unable to convey his findings to Earth. Meanwhile, Cooper sifts through nearly 23 years of video messages, watching his children's lives pass him by. Cooper breaks down in tears as his shy little son grows into a husband, father, and parent who has lost a child over the course of several videos. Donald died, and Murph had become distant. Tom says his goodbyes, accepting that Cooper will not return. The screen goes black, then Murph appears, beginning her message by swearing at her father. It's her birthday, and she is the same age as Cooper. She ends her message by imploring him to return. Murph dries her tears and notices Professor Brand in a wheelchair at the entryway. He is surprised to see her send her first message. They make their way to his office to collaborate on the still unsolved idea. Murph stares attentively at the board, realizing that they had been looking at the problem incorrectly. Professor Brand is aware of this, but Murph cannot understand why he does not take action. Back in Endurance, they consider whether to visit Dr. Man's planet or Edmund's, which has been transmitting for some time. Amelia believes that the latter is the superior option because it is farther away from the black hole. Cooper believes Dr. Mann, who continues to send signals to them, is the obvious choice. Before they begin voting, Cooper informs Romilly of Amelia's preference for Edmund's planet because they have a relationship. Amelia does not refute it. Instead, she promotes the concept that their love is sufficient cause for them to select Edmund. Her passionate speech has no effect on the two, who continue on their journey to Dr. Mann's planet. On Earth, Tom realized his dream of becoming a farmer. He fires a row of crops to prevent the blight from spreading. Murph pays a visit to Tom and his wife, Lois. Tom's second son, Coop, suffers from respiratory difficulties as a result of the local dust storms and the planet's deteriorating environment. Meanwhile, in Endurance, Amelia harbors a vengeance against Cooper. She claims that if Dr. Man's world is not fit, they must either return or proceed with Plan B on Edmund's planet, sacrificing billions of lives on Earth. Murph rushes to the hospital to see Professor Brandt. As he nears death, she tells him that she will complete what he started. With his final remarks, Brandt admits to Murph that Project Endurance was never intended to return, and that Plan A and the idea are both lies. Brand dies, leaving Murph perplexed and upset. Murph delivers the news via a video message. She accuses Amelia of knowing her father's lies. A spacecraft in the horizon is about to enter Dr. Man's planet. The party lands in the cold mountains, where they discover a base. They open the dilapidated living room to find Dr. Man sleeping soundly. Man bursts into tears when he sees another human being after being woken up. Man reveals his discovery regarding the planet. They are currently to the point where there is no breathable air. However, the planet has a lower surface where life may potentially grow. He believes that alien life forms already inhabit the Earth, but they have yet to be seen. Tars requests that Amelia watch the video message, and Murph's voice fills the room as she tells the truth. Murph whimpers at the thought of her father abandoning them to die. Cooper is taken aback by the unexpected revelation. Amelia insists she doesn't understand what Murph is talking about. Man butts in, claiming that Professor Brand solved the solution even before the astronauts left, but simply proving the hypothesis is insufficient. They need to know what's within the black hole in order to use it effectively. Unfortunately, natural laws do not allow for this. Man defends the professor's actions, claiming that risking the lives of billions on Earth is vital to save the human species. Cooper is in denial as he prepares to return to Earth. 
Back on Earth, Murph informs her colleague, Getty, about the professor's deception. Getty claims that society deserves to know their fate, but Murph refuses to share this information. She hasn't given up on Plan A. A gut instinct tells her there's hope. She remembers the ghost in her room and plans to return and finally comprehend its messages. Murph returns to her former room, while Getty monitors Tom's family's deteriorating condition. Getty berates Tom for not leaving their house, and Tom hits Getty. Murph taunts him by questioning if he will wait for his next child to die before moving out. Tom threatens them to leave. Murph directs their path across the cornfields. She grabs a petrol tank and begins dousing the crops before lighting it and driving away. The fires alert Tom, and he leaves his home to deal with the situation. Murph and Getty seize the opportunity to rescue Tom's family and return to her chamber. Cooper prepares to leave the alien planet for Earth. Romilly advises dropping Taras into the black hole to learn more about what's inside. Tars is a robot, but he demonstrates his humanity by accepting the challenge. Dr. Mann prepares to build the laboratory and habitat modules sent down by Endurance. Cooper goes with Mann to scout out probable locations for the modules. On their journey, Mann talks with Cooper about how human survival instincts allow them to push themselves beyond their limits. And, as a father, that instinct is strengthened by his children. Their talk becomes stranger by the second, and they find themselves on the verge of an abyss, peering down. Man then takes Cooper's transmitting device and pulls him away. Man attempts to kick his hands, but Cooper pulls him down with him. Man claims he cannot let Cooper escape with his ship. He admits that he falsified his facts and that the planet is uninhabitable. He chose to save his life, risking the mission. The two battle, and when Cooper gains the upper hand, Man headbutts his helmet, exposing him to hazardous air and leaving him to suffocate. He turns back to Cooper, attempting to feel sorry for him. Cooper crawls to a communication device and shouts for Amelia. KAC and Amelia fly toward Cooper. They arrive on time, and Amelia rushes to save him. They board the ship, and Cooper exposes man's lies. Meanwhile, Romilly begins to modify TARS. When he examines the data from Dr. Man's tactical robot, he senses that something is awry. He hears Amelia call on the radio, but then there's an explosion. Dr. Man can be seen in the distance, astonished by what has happened. He turns on his communications to see Cooper is still alive with Amelia. Cooper and Amelia watch the destruction, and TARS emerges from the flames. Tars boards the ship and announces Romilly's death. Simultaneously, Dr. Man boards the ship, intending to abandon the crew. Cooper communicates with him, but he does not answer. Case informs the team that the vessel's auto-docking system has been deactivated. Dr. Mann will need a miracle to successfully board Endurance. Mann approaches the space station, intending to dock the ship manually. The ship hovers perilously close to the hatch, and Mann fails to line it correctly. Despite the alarms, he intends to open the hatch. Cooper and his crew approach Endurance. He anxiously pleads Mann not to open the hatch because it will cause the airlock to explode. Amelia's voice begins to broadcast across the ship, alerting him again. Man justifies his activities by claiming that he is doing so for the benefit of humanity. He opens the hatch, and the airlock explodes. The crew witnesses the explosion from a distance as debris approaches them. Cooper takes control of the spaceship. He intends to chase endurance and dock at tremendous speeds. Case claims it's impossible. He counters that it's vital. They are under the docking area as Endurance approaches the planet's stratosphere. TARS opens the hatch, and they are precisely aligned. The ship begins to rotate with Endurance. They are subjected to extreme G-force, which causes Amelia to black out. Cooper grabs onto the controls for dear life as TRS successfully locks in. They halt the rotation, propelling Endurance out of the stratosphere. The station stabilizes, and they celebrate. However, their elation is cut short when Kiesi announces that they are on their way to Gargantua. They go through the ship's broken corridors. Amelia reports from the generator room that there is power and the system is stable. Cooper announces that the navigations have been destroyed. They cannot return to Earth, but they may reach Edmund's planet. Cooper intends to use Gargantua as a big slingshot to propel them toward Edmund. They prepare, use every aspect of endurance. They would have to lose as much weight as possible, including tears. Amelia dislikes the concept, but T. Aurus claims his only goal is to save humanity. Endurance is in Gargantua's orbit. They reach maximum velocity and begin their escape. The engines shoot off one by one. Tars detaches and says his farewells. Amelia panics when she hears C.A.S. to begin to eject Cooper's section. There aren't enough resources for both of them, so Cooper detaches and sacrifices himself. He approaches the black hole center. Amelia sobs as she listens to Cooper's last words. Cooper's ship is surrounded in darkness, prompting him to scream out to Tars. 
Turbulence rises when flashes of light appear. The light hits the ship like raindrops and the exterior starts to burn up. Cooper yells and loses consciousness. The computer wakes him up, urging him to eject. He takes off into the darkness, shuddering in the cold and strain. He falls into an apparently infinite area and grips one of the walls. He realizes the wall is constructed out of books. He attempts to look the other way and sees a chamber. He bangs on the bookcases and a little Murph observes the scattered books in miniature lander. Cooper shouts out to the little Murph, but she doesn't answer. He turns to discover that each wall represents a separate event in Murph's past. He sees his younger self about to go. He curses himself out and tells him to stay. Cooper realizes he can converse via Morse code. He begins pushing into the pages, attempting to spell the word stay. Meanwhile, present Murph begins to pull out the books. She feels upset as she searches for a message she penned in a notebook as a child. Cooper sees his younger self bidding goodbye to Murph. He begs younger Murph to let him stay, but Murph ignores his pleadings. Murph realizes that the ghost is her father. Tar survives and screams out to Cooper. He claims they are in the dimension established by omnibenevolent beings, where time is a physical plane. Cooper realizes that gravity can travel through time, therefore he can send a message to Murph. Murph realizes the same thing and expects her father to send a message. Cooper asks TARS for NASA's binary coordinates. He transmits it to his past self as sand. Cooper laughs as he understands that the omnibenevolent creatures had chosen Murph to save humanity. He moves along the corridors, following his feelings for Murph. He believes he can utilize the watch to alert Murph of the quantum data she needs to make plan a work. Murph snatches the watch and notices the second arm ticking in Morse code. She rushes outdoors and hugs Tom, telling him that their father has returned to save them. In Bran's office, she works out how to implement Plan A Murph, pleased, launches her calculations and kisses Getty. Tars informs Cooper that their strategy worked, and the omnibenevolent entities begin to seal the realm they are in. Cooper discloses that the entities are people who have lived long after them and evolve into something greater than they could have imagined. Cooper becomes captivated by the dazzling light and notices Amelia reaching out her hand to him. His arm was the deformation she had earlier observed. Cooper awakens in a hospital room. He looks out and sees a twisted universe, and the doctor tells him they're at Cooper Station near Saturn. He enjoys that they named it after him, and the nurse chuckles. It's named after his daughter, who is on her way to visit him. As he walks through the station, he realizes how far humanity has come. They find themselves in his home, which serves as a type of museum commemorating Cooper's life. He notices T.A.R.S. and later that day fixes him up. Cooper enters a chamber to find his descendants and an elderly Murph. She is pleased to see that her father has returned. She then asks him to go and go look for Amelia. Amelia and Case are alone in a foreign land. Meanwhile, Cooper and Taoras begin their quest to rejoin with them. The omnibenevolent beings are humans. After generations of evolution and innovation, they can enter a multidimensional realm. This enabled them to construct the three-dimensional plane to which Cooper was taken when he entered the black hole. There, he provided Murph the quantum data, which she utilized to carry out Plan A. The NASA space station was able to leave Earth and establish stations across the galaxy, one of which being the Cooper Station. Because of the slower time he experienced while being slingshotted in Gargantuan, the black hole spat him out near Saturn years later. Cooper then encounters a much older Murph, who instructs him to find Amelia. Amelia has recently landed on Edmund's planet due to time relativity, most likely thinking she is mankind's final hope, unaware that humanity has sent Cooper to find her. So what did you think of the movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.